What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So tonight we are going to look at the June 21st episode of Impact. The last episode that was taped in the Impact Zone um, set of tapings. So next week we will start the Canada set of tapings that took place earlier in June. Uh, they alluded to that a couple times throughout the show. And we will see the debut of Rich Swan next week apparently. So, good things there. Very glad we are out of the impact zone, at least for the next set of tapings. Uh, next two sets of tapings, that should bring us through August. So, after that, it's kind of up in the air right now. Actually, no, September, they'll probably be in the UK. So, I'm sure we'll get a set of tapings from there as well. Um, but, let's talk about impact. So, we open the show with a In Memory of Vader on the screen. Impact's always good about doing this. Very sad news to hear, but unfortunately, we knew the time was soon due to his health conditions. Uh, sad that he never made it to the WWE Hall of Fame, as that was one of his last wishes, but that is a discussion for a different time and place. Uh, so we open the show with the tag team title match, Z&E defending their titles against LAX. Um... LAX always gets the best reaction, even in the Impact Zone. Everybody's pretty much into it. Uh, we got This Is Awesome chance throughout the match. This was a fun match. Great way to open the show. Uh, LAX actually meet Zini at the stage, um, actually on the entrance ramp. So we get started. Action starts on the outside. Chairs get involved. You know, Kings call on the shots. LAX looks like their former self. Uh, we get the action into the ring. Uh, Z and E are able to start out early again, working over Santana. Um, he's able to make the hot tag to Ortiz. They end up isolating Andrew Everett in the corner. Um, DJ Z eventually gets the hot tag. We get some great back and forth action. A whole bunch of tag team moves. Um, like I said, it was a fun match. So this all happened in this time. Um, Andrew Everett goes up top. Uh, I don't remember what move he was going for. Some sort of flip. Uh, he misses. LAX ends up hitting the street sweeper. They pick up the victory and the tag team championships. Um, so like I said, the crowd was actually pretty good for this match. Um, like that, that's just how they are for LAX. Um, it's nice to see that, uh, I don't remember who it was. I think it was DJ Z actually that posted on Twitter that, uh, they will take bookings together as a tag team. So I'm hoping they stay stick together um in the future as i think they make a great tag team um i think somebody had actually made the um comparison to uh chris saban and frankie kazarian so i wouldn't say that's too far off uh so we head over to the virtual studio where they kind of hype the rest of the show they usually do this every show after the first match uh, we go backstage, and Jimmy Jacobs and Congo Kong are there. Jacobs says that Brian Cage came here and did what he wanted without consequence. That doesn't sit well with the princess. Uh, he wants to show the world that the machine is no match for the monster. So that's kind of where we figured things were going. Um, looking forward to it. Interested to see how they're going to build that up. Uh, Congo Kong staying strong after losing to Moose a couple weeks ago. Um so, yeah, uh, this is one thing I really do enjoy about Impact is that, you know, last week we had Cage on the show, Seidel, Eli Drake, a couple other guys, and this week had other people on the show. So, you know, it's not the same thing every week, which is really nice to see. Uh, then we got a video package of KM and Falaba and kind of everything that led up to uh, their dispute last week. So KM comes out. And uh, he says he tried to take Falaba under his wing, showing him how to better himself. He calls out Falaba. Falaba comes out, uh, pulls a note, I think out of his pants, and hands it to KM. He leaves the ring. Uh, KM reads the note, which is, uh, it was real well written. Uh, just, it was so in character for Falaba, the way it was written. Uh, he basically says that KM is a bully. Uh, he's not going to wrestle him tonight, but there is a wrestler on standby to wrestle him. Of course, KM thought it was going to be Richard Justice. However, it's Scott Steiner. Um, so this match happens, Scott Steiner versus KM, and it is exactly what you thought it was going to be, with Scott Steiner beating the crap out of KM and then making him tap out to the Steiner recliner. Um, they kind of buried KM here a little bit, but 
I think this was Steiner's last match. I don't believe he was with them for the Canada taping. So it is what it is. I'm sure this thing between the two of them, uh, KM and Falaba, that is, will continue throughout the next set of tapings, possibly leading up to a match. Who knows? Uh, I do not know really anything that happened at the Canada tapings, and I'm very glad about that. Uh, then we get the Slammiversary press conference recap, uh, kind of hype the main event between Austin Aries and Moose. Uh, then talk about the merging of the Grand Championship and the world title. Um, so, I, I mean, Moose has been kind of taking things on his own and doing stuff on Twitter. He actually changed his avatar to a picture of Austin Aries after he got kicked in the face by Shinsuke Nakamura and suffered an orbital bone fracture. Um, and, you know, he's kind of been making fun of him for being in 205 Live and things like that. But I, I don't know if that's... I like that he's doing something with the match, but I think Aries is supposed to be the heel here, so whatever. At least he's doing something. I got to give him credit for that. So we go back to the virtual studio, and uh, they talk about Impact now returning to TV in Mexico. Uh, that takes place sometime next month. And then Eddie Edwards has gone, gone home and try, to try and find himself. Uh, that leads us into a video of Eddie Edwards pulling up to, I guess, his house, um, he ends up running over a bunch of recycling cans and a kid's bike. Um, he's knocking on the door, going crazy, ends up breaking the door down, looking for Alicia. Um, he runs throughout the house, yelling, screaming, just going crazy. He ends up in a room, there's a mirror, he sees his reflection, then all of a sudden it kind of changes into Sammy Callahan. Uh, then all the events that kind of led up to this point is played through in his head, and uh, he ends up breaking the mirror and screaming, You did this! Um... So, just more of the breakdown of uh, Eddie Edwards, and uh, I, I think he's headed to House of Hardcore next week. We'll see something between him and Tommy Dreamer. Um, that I actually know what happened. That took place a while back, and it was taped. Um, but yeah, so then we uh, get a promo cut by OV on one of their little hand cam things, um, but they say they're going to make an example out of Pentagon Jr. and Phantasma tonight. And then we get Taya versus Madison Rain. So Taya basically controlled the entire match, you know, using her size and strength. Uh, Madison was able to get a couple moves in here and there. Uh, she ends up hitting a step up in Siguri on Taya and then hits the cross rain, and that's that. Um, after the match, she grabs the mic and says that she had no intention of being an in-ring competitor when she came back to Impact, which is funny because they made mention that she was going to now... Uh, commentate the women's matches we got one and then the thing happened with tessa and that was it uh so then she kind of says she's back to capitalize on moments and she says that and then she puts over taya and tessa uh she says that impact management told her that if she beat taya tonight she'd get one more shot at the knockouts title and that's going to be at slammiversary she says she will slay the bride um the lights kind of go down we hear a bunch of laughing and uh weird noises and apparently this mind games with from sue young have begun um so i mean there's a lot of i guess it's kind of split between people that are unhappy with the way they did things with madison rain coming in getting a title shot you know people bringing back old talent to uh to get title shots and crap like that um i'm kind of on the fence with it here i mean i i think this wasn't their original plan but with the fact that tayo is going to be out at the june tapings and rosemary still being injured they kind of had their hands tied here a little bit they didn't want to probably put tessa right in the title picture um so we'll see how it plays out i'm sure i'm sure it'll be good um as madison's a competent competitor in the ring so we'll see oh uh, we head over to the lax clubhouse uh they are celebrating their tag team title victory conan shows up and he's like uh yo king we need to talk so we go to commercial come back and conan says you know a lot of things aren't making sense and uh, he wants to know if King knows who did this to him. And he asks about homicide. King gives him an answer. Conan says that he, he trusts no one and everybody is a suspect. King kind of takes this personally and he asks if he is a suspect. Conan's like, maybe. He says uh, he better not find out that King had anything to do with this. So this whole thing is heating up. Um, really, really good storyline here. Um, I don't know if it necessarily needed the tag team titles on LAX since they're going to be 
put into this whole thing. Um, but hey, whatever. Um, not much we could do about it. Uh, I, I feel like they, they sh this was big enough that it kind of could have been a story on its own. Tag team titles weren't necessary. But like I said, whatever. It is what it is. Uh, and then we head to the virtual studio, and I got a kick out of this. Uh, Don says that there can be only one OG, and referencing between King and uh, Conan. And he says, I know this because I'm from the streets. And Josh's reaction was priceless, and it was just hilarious. Uh, then we get a promo video from Killer Cross. Uh, the question everybody has is why. And he says the answer is why not? Uh, he says there's no continuity in this universe, only mayhem. He wants to turn this industry upside down. He says he is the new beginning. Uh, great stuff here. He looks super confident in his promos. Just uh, great presence. Uh, I'm very interested to see him and what they do with him in, in uh, the next set of tapings. As uh, like I think a lot of people, we don't know too much about Killer Cross a big guy and uh, he's got a great look so i'm very interested to see what goes on there uh we go to commercial and come back and right away to the gwn flashback of the week we get uh sanjay dutt versus loki from slammiversary i believe and this took place when they were in india but i don't know if impact is listening to this or a lot of people were complaining about it as well but they actually kept the GWN flashback moment of the week on the screen through the entire thing. Very, very small thing that easy to do, and they did it. So thank you, Impact, for that. Um, however, got to complain, right? I mean, what fun is things if you can't complain about them? Uh, since it's the moment of the week, this lasted a lot longer than a moment. Um, I don't know the actual length of it, but they showed a good portion of the match. So, still things to work on here and there. Uh, and that brings us to our main event, OVE versus Pentagon Jr. and Phantasma. Uh, Pentagon and Phantasma charge the ring, go right to work. Two of them working well together as a cohesive unit. Uh, Phantasma and Pentagon are firmly in control until, of course, the third man out there takes... Things into his own hand. Callahan gets involved, uh, takes out Phantasma's knee with the bat, and this gave the Chris brothers an opportunity, and they took it, so they worked over the knee for the good portion of the match. Um, eventually, Pentagon's able to get the hot tag, takes out both Chris brothers. They get a, a little bit of offense in, but Pentagon is able to put away Jay Christ with the Pentagon driver. After the match, Sammy comes in and takes out both Pentagon and Phantasma. Uh, the Chris brothers are holding uh, Pentagon Jr. Sammy is trying to rip the mask off, but Phantasma comes in for the save with a chair, and uh, that is how we end the show. Uh, Sammy's just uh, keeping, keeping up. He's, uh, I guess this is what they're going to do in their next feud. Um, I like Sammy Callahan versus Pentagon. I think that's going to be great. Um, I did see some matches that do happen in the um, next set of tapings. I mean, nothing storyline related, but just a match that happened, and I heard it was fantastic, and it involved, uh, well, four of these five, uh, well, four of the six men that are going to be in the match. So looking forward to that. I'm glad Pentagon is sticking around, and they're going to do something with him. I would assume we're going to get a match between the two of them at Slammiversary. So, like, an overall good show. I enjoyed it. Um, we only had a couple matches, really, this week. We had the tag title match, um, Cam and Scott Steiner, and then the knockouts match and the main event. So, they were able to make good use of the time, minus the GWN segment of the week. Um, I apologize for there not being any impact report last weekend. I was originally going to do a review of the Zero Fear show uh, the one night only. However, I watched the first part of it, went to watch the second part, and had some GWN issues. So hopefully I'll get a review up at some point. Um, this weekend, though, I will have an impact report. I got a few things uh, talking about Phantasma's future and the company. Um, and I'm sure I'll find some other things to talk about. But that is all I have for you guys today. Thanks for checking out my video, and until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.